Are you interested in a simple system that helps you accomplish more each day, helps you transform effort into outcomes, and create more of the results that you're looking for? Hi, I'm Justin Hitt with Inside Strategic Relations. The key thing that I do each day is turn my required activities into processes and then delegate those processes to individuals who can A, do the work better than I can, or B, do the work, the same work at a lower cost. Now, th- this is a ver- seems pretty obvious. If you can get someone else to do the job and they would produce the same or better outcome as you, then it's really not worth you doing. And this is a mindset change that we talk about strategic business relationships. Uh, it just isn't, um, it isn't the tip of the tongue for everybody. But now, how do you know the cost of the activity? How do you know quality of the activity? How do you know what things you can delegate and essentially multiply your time through the efforts of others and really know what the value of your own time is? So this is a concept from Six Sigma. And I know I've talked about Six Sigma before. Six Sigma is a, a, a quality methodology or a systems methodology used in business. Uh, it's similar to uh, Kanban is another model, Agile, these different things. Uh, you don't need to know the specifics of that, but what you do need to know is a simple system for designing processes. Because if you have a packaged activity and you have an understanding of the outcome quality of that activity and the cost of performing that activity, then you can make the judgment of whether somebody else ought to be doing it. Uh, It starts with DMAIC. I'll probably pronounce it wrong, but it's the MAC. Um, It's define, measure, analyze, improve, and control. Now, the controls that I'm talking about here are cost controls and quality controls, but you may have other controls that have to do with reducing your risk, that have to do with uh, being able to repeat this process, or controls associated with uh, your timeliness or the triggering event that causes this process to execute. So one example might be is your daily calendar. Each day, it's useful to know what you're going to do that day, so you can start weeks before setting up today. Now, if you didn't set up today, you can certainly set up tomorrow or two weeks down the line, but it's simply a tracking mechanism to know what you're supposed to be doing and what you're not supposed to be doing. And simply using this process, you can define your goals and objectives And that would determine what kind of what you should be doing in a general sense. You can measure what you're doing today. That'll give you an idea of the key activities that you need to do each day. You can analyze those activities to determine if some of those activities can can readily be given to someone else. I take my trash to the curb. I don't take it all the way down to the landfill. I don't need to do anything other than take the trash to the curb. But guess what? Turns out my kid can take the trash to the curb. Now, in the beginning, I might have to do some persuasion. I might have to do some asking. But ultimately, the skill level required to take a trash bag out and put it in a trash can and take it to the curb is something that a child can take care of. So I don't have to take care of it. It's now assigned to the kid. From there, you want to improve on the activity. Well, we've reduced the volume of trash that we create. So if he misses the trash takeout one day, it's not a big deal. We can catch it the next week. Even two weeks worth of trash is only one trash bag in a small container. Not a big deal. So we we can improve on it, though, by having a schedule that he sees and knows that he needs to do. And by the way, the uh, the kid takes out the trash sometimes and other times he doesn't. I'm not too concerned. But the controls might be as some kind of reward associated with it. Now, I actually use controls to reward myself when I do a good job on something, uh, and it gives me something to look forward to. But, but it's not – when I say Six Sigma, when I say Kanban, when I say Agile, people kind of think it's complex because businesses make this complex. Businesses make this complex because people who have jobs like to keep jobs, and they keep jobs by seeming important when there's work to be done. But if you're paying the bill, then we don't want to make work for people or ourselves that requires somebody to be there if the outcome really isn't worth it. So this uh, this define, measure, analyze, improve, and control gives you the opportunity to look at your own day to discover those control mechanisms, to discover those areas of importance, and to start optimize. Now, there's a book by Perry Marshall called The 80-20 Sales and Marketing System. Now, it's an unfortunate title because it isn't just about sales and marketing, even though the greatest leverage from this methodology comes 
in the form of increasing your income, of increasing your opportunity to serve customers. Uh, But it is actually about the optimization of your time and effort. It's the 80-20 rule. Once you've figured out the three to five key processes for your day, you can start asking these questions. Now, we can narrow that into the three to five key processes that that you're required to do each day. But essentially, there's a, there's a, a few activities that create a lot of results. What are those activities? Now, documenting your processes is a way to know what your activities are. There's another way to document processes that, that works very well with the DMAC, and that is your actual, your a chart that has your in, inputs, process, and outputs. And you actually start with your outputs. Puts. When we do a wor- workshop on goal setting, we set up and establish goals and deliverables, not just talking about the aspirations you have, but the manifestations of what those aspirations would look like. What is the outcome that you desire? Now, once you know the outcome you desire, there's a, there's a tendency to find tools or apps or software that might move towards that outcome, but we need to step back and ask, what incomes do we have? have to offer? What inputs do we have to offer? What resources do we have available? This is some project management. This can be done with your DMAC, but you also kind of just want to get an idea of what processes need to be done or are executed in order to get from point A to point B. Let's say you're a a craftsman and you have a block of wood. And now you're a craftsman in wood. You carve wood and you got an idea that you want to make a, a duck decoy. You you have to start with the duck decoy rather than the block of wood. Now, over time, you might pick up a block of wood and look at it and say, well, this would make a great duck decoy and this would make a great uh, neckerchief slide for a Boy Scout. Uh, but essentially, you can't get to that outcome until you first decide what the outcome is. If you just sit down and start carving to see what it turns into, you're going to end up with wood shavings. You're going to end up with with nothing. What I'm just describing here as a shortcut to the outcomes you desire is the processes and systems that create those outcomes. You can borrow those processes and systems from other people. You can develop them yourself. But if you don't know how to critically evaluate the activities that you're doing each day and their contributions to the outcomes you desire, then you're not going to move towards those outcomes as efficiently as possible. Your time is busy my time is busy. Uh, we have plenty of distractions now with the internet and and television, and there's always been distractions. But ultimately, uh, this other method here that I'm sharing, because I wanted to share with you two methods, is actually a chart uh, that has your inputs, processes, and outputs, and it is actually keyed on the outputs. So what's one output that you you desire? Well, many of my subscribers want to increase their influence in the marketplace. They want to be in a position where their high incomes or their businesses can be sustained and grow easily despite economic changes, challenges, and even deficiencies in their own behavior or knowledge. One of the things that I find valuable using the system of processes and delegation is that if you don't know how to do the work, but you're clear about the outcome, you can use an alternative income input to get that output. That input could be your income. So, for example, you want to position yourself as an expert in the marketplace because you're in a highly competitive market and you're going for that next level position, but nobody knows who you are. And that's because you've been heads down, working every day, getting the job solved, getting things done. Well, if you're going to position yourself as an expert, you might think that social media and and all this internet stuff, it would be an exciting place to go and show how smart you are. But here's the problem. And I saw this with many of the engineers that I've worked with when we're working in classified environments or we're working in data centers. You just can't video cast yourself working on a giant Cisco switch. Uh, you can't go and 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 brag about the regulatory meeting that you did such a great job on. Uh, there is not a general marketplace for those 
that information and the individuals that are in these high income bracket categories or subject matter experts, they don't go look in the general population for this type of information. Uh, if you're interested in Six Sigma applications for financial services, um, you're, you're not going to find a thousand articles on this topic. You might find two or three, um, but you're not going to find things that are outside of the KPMGs, the Arthur, you know, the big, the big, uh, consulting firms. And if you're not a member of those big consulting firms, you're likely not going to get published by them. So if the outcome is to become a subject matter expert in your industry and all these other uh, obstacles start coming up, you've got to look at what do you have available to show? Well, very often you have key knowledge and you have personal relationships. So within your own organization, the process might be is to start writing white papers and to start uh, doing presentations, brown bags presentations and such uh, to to help mentor those people who could replace you in a future position. Now, that's a very tricky thing, and that's more of a strategic relations model. Most people would just train to show how smart they are, but I want you to actually seek to replace yourself because, again, you're going to have these process models that have been optimized, and you're going to be able to plug people into systems that support your long-term objectives and then ultimately grow through that by being an organizer of resources. Now, this is where it gets kind of tricky. If you're looking at your everyday activities and you're looking at the deliverables for the projects that you work on and you're looking at all this, it's going to get to be a pretty big list. So what I'm going to ask you to do is focus on the three to five key activities that you must do each day to move you forward to the outcomes you desire. Now, these might not be activities you only do with your place of employment. These could be activities that you do for uh, personal development, for example. Investing the time in listening to this podcast is part of your personal development and it moves you forward. Are you getting the value that you're looking for? Are you getting practical tools that you can use? If those are the case, then you can continue. If not, then bugger off because there's other places that you can go to get the insights that you need. So you have this outcome that you desire the and it becomes the output of your process. You have this input, which could be a lot of obstacles. What of these os- obstacles can you transform? If you can't talk about your business in the general public, then is there a niche market or audience that you can talk about your business? And then what is that? Well, it's the relationships you have in the business that you're in. And then it may also be peers in the marketplace. It could be individuals that are outside of the company that you're in, where you can share general knowledge about the the activity that needs to be done or mistakes to avoid or what to look out for, and then ultimately use a newsletter or special reports or other types of, of, of interactions to build awareness in the marketplace. Now, I go far beyond awareness. I actually want my peers paying me money to learn what I know and I can learn off of them as well. And then ultimately we use that money to mutually grow the value of our positions in the marketplace. That's a strategic relations, joint venture, cooperative marketing perspective. Uh, But if you're just getting started, look at this model. What is the outcome that you desire? What are some of the ways that you can get there? And what are some of the ways that you're not going to get there? And then what resources do you have? What uh, ideas do you have? Let's build a process. Once you build the process, then you want to go beyond just the simple definition. You want to measure it to know whether it works or not. How much does it cost? How long does it take? What's the uh, the quality level of the outcome? What are the deliverables? And then ultimately, you can move through uh, a position where you are now the master of that universe rather than the participant or the, the uh, technician. The faster you can move from doing the work to the marketing of the work or the or the uh, the market fit of the work, the faster you'll move into higher income positions. Very often, the folks that I coach, it is not a better version of the same job they have today that will get them where they want to be. It is often a, a transformational move that puts them in a position where the company demands 
to pay them more. And if they aren't going to demand it, you'll have the contacts in the marketplace in order to to step up and move along. You don't have to have a newsletter with a thousand subscribers or even a few hundred subscribers. Uh, You could have simply a mastermind group, as Napoleon Hill describes, where you periodically share ideas and you interact. I've been in some wonderful mentor and mentoree relationships within my organization, uh, my primary clients' uh, organizations, and within my industry. And I found it very useful because, again, I'm using this process-based approach. Now, what's wonderful, and I'm going to leave you with this, is that once you have the process packaged, you can literally take that process and hand it to somebody. And now there already could be processes in your industry that you could document, refine, and use in your own organization or use them just the way they are. But you can package that process, hand it to somebody, and get the outcome that you're looking for. And it's just, it becomes hands-free. You can uh, elevate the level of work that you do. You can move to the next level naturally without having to ask somebody or get permission from the outside world. You can generate additional income streams or additional areas of influence that make you the go-to person for the outcomes that other people desire. In fact, you may even plug into someone else's process that helps them get where they want to be, but still elevates you to where you want to be. That's the power of strategic relationships. I'm Justin Hitt with Inside Strategic Relations, where I seek to uh, deliver to you insights and and actions that will transform business relationships into profits guaranteed. You can visit us at www.insidestrategicrelations.com, where you're going to get additional insights and resources. If you're a coaching client, and you've joined us in that particular program, we can answer specific questions about your situation and how to apply the uh, expert, uh, becoming an expert in your marketplace, how to apply these relationship models to identify people who can take you to the next level, how to package processes and the the day-to-day activities that you do so that you can start getting better automation, so that you can get better uh, delegation, and you can get more consistent outcomes and results without you having to be the guy running all the the, uh, you know, pulling all the levers behind the curtain. I don't know whether that is a, uh, a Wizard of Oz analogy or a Doctor Who analogy, but either way, I'd rather you be the master of the universe that you've created rather than a, a slave in someone else's world. Again, I'm Justin Hitt with Inside Strategic Relations. You're listening to the Inside Strategic Relations podcast. If you have any question. Or, or, or comments, you can visit us at www.insidestrategicrelations.com. I'm looking forward to hearing from you.